Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Exponent's AI mock interview tool to practice your mock interviews on your own. Maybe you're not ready to connect with a peer to do a peer-to-peer -peer mock interview, or you have a real interview coming up and you're not yet comfortable on camera or in your communication skills. This AI mock interview tool is going to evaluate your answers and then based on real interview rubrics is gonna give you feedback on how you can improve your answer for next time. So let's check it out. First, navigate to tryexponent.com slash practice. Right now I'm logged in as a member and if you're logged in, you'll see this option to start an AI interview. When I click click this, it's going to give me the option today because this tool at the time of recording is still in beta. We have behavioral and product interview types, and in the near future, we're going to be launching some technical interview types as well that you can practice uh, with AI. So today, I'm going to choose behavioral interviews to get started. Uh, you're going to approve your microphone and uh, approve these pop-ups. As soon as I hit start interview, I'm going to get randomly assigned an interview question. Uh, this is supposed to mimic the real world environment, of course, where you don't know what interview questions are going to get asked. So it's important to be prepared kind of for whatever comes. Uh, you'll also see an option, maybe if it's a question that you've practiced already, you will be able to cycle through it. And you're going to start a 10 minute countdown timer to deliver your answer, and then at the end of it, our AI will automatically give you suggestions and feedback for next time based on real interview rubrics that we've collected from companies and hiring managers over the years. So I'm going to hit start interview. I'm going to see what question I get and start my answer. So the question that I received today is tell me about a time that you made a mistake. You can see that the audio is already recording. Uh, there is no video component for this because of anonymity and privacy concerns at the moment, but that's something that we're working on in the near future. So I'm just going to go ahead and answer this question really quickly, and we'll see how I did. And if you want to skip past my answer and just see what the feedback looks like, you can jump to the end of the video. While I was working as a product manager on a habit tracking mobile application at my previous role, I was responsible personally for launching a brand new streak feature that was going to reward users for their consecutive habit completions every single day. And I assumed that users would probably prefer having some strict rules around being able to follow that streak so that if they miss a day, their entire streak would reset. That was my thinking going into this project. However, after we started launching the feature, quickly started to see that there was a drop in daily engagement from the people who were already using the app the most. So the mistake that I made was that I had failed to even validate my assumption with any real user data before we just jumped in and started developing this feature. I was kind of operating off of a gut instinct. Many users found that this streak reset was too discouraging and actually kept them from coming back to the app at all, especially when they missed one day or two days because of an illness or because of an unexpected travel event that they had to uh, leave town. I immediately took ownership, though, of this mistake, and I worked with the engineering team and the design team to try and implement uh, a fix for it. The idea that we came up with was a streak freeze, maybe similar to Duolingo or another habit tracking app that requires you to engage every single day. And this allowed users to prevent their progress from being dropped in certain cases, like I mentioned, maybe vacation or, or feeling sick on a particular day. Uh, and then this time, to ensure that we were on the right track and solving the right problem, we sent out some user surveys and tried to review our analytics dashboards to understand where the pain points were that users had. Um, after we launched this streak freeze feature a couple weeks later, engagement completely rebounded back to where it was before. And then the three months that followed after the feature came live, 25% of users actually used the app more and our user retention improved across the board. So most importantly through this process, I learned that I need to value validate product decisions with real data and user feedback rather than just relying on assumptions to try and get something done quickly. This experience completely reinforced the importance I know of user research, data-driven decision-making, and being able to iterate on those mistakes quickly rather than letting them bog you down. Since then, I've made it a habit myself to test my assumptions through things like A-B testing, interviews regularly with users, and prototyping feedback faster and iterating rather than just launching features out into the wild. All right, I'm hitting 
submit on my answer. Um, you can see here, we're back. I'm back out of interview mode. I'm here in the real world again. You can see now that I'm going to get graded on my answer. I actually think I did uh, pretty well on the communication and problem solving by painting, uh, painting a story using the star method. That's something that you'll notice in some of our exponent content. But here you can see uh, that I, and this is something I would admit to, my answer didn't really mention a lot of collaboration opportunities. I talked once about working working with the engineers, uh, but didn't talk about how um, that, that process could have been improved or how I involved them in later steps as well. And maybe depending on the role that you're interviewing for, the collaboration aspect might be helpful. Uh, yeah, as we're developing this product, you can, of course, provide feedback to us on how well um, the summary was or this transcript of the call. You can see all of the audio and dialogue was uh, recorded and transcribed there. This is accessible later. You can come back and review the AI feedback that we provided to you. And just reiterating that the uh, communication problem solving and collaboration grades that you receive here are based on the rubrics that we've received both from FANG companies and startups on how they grade candidates in real world interviews, oftentimes listening for what was the situation, the task, and the actions and results that came from the projects that you were working on. Let me know what you think of this feature in the comments down below. We know there are a lot of AI interview prep tools out there these days. And we're really trying to make something that's actionable, rooted in the real world, and comes from questions the candidates are likely to hear. Best of luck, as always, on your interviews, and we'll see you in the next video.